In this set of learning outcomes, we're looking at methods of heat transfer, and there are three methods called conduction, convection, and radiation. The first couple of learning outcomes then are about conduction. So what do we mean by that? Well, conduction occurs in solids, or mostly in solids, I should say. And what happens if you heat up one end of a solid, and then the atoms start to vibrate faster. But when they do that, they bump into their neighbours. And they can then vibrate faster. I, the neighbours would start to heat up and this is how heat then transfers through a solid. So if you take a copper rod, if you heat one end of it with a Bunsen burner, uh, then eventually the heat will transfer along to the other end as well. Materials which are good at this uh, are known as conductors, so they're good at transferring heat. Materials which are not good at this are known as insulators. Give some examples of a conductor. So materials which are good. Right, transferring heat. And strictly speaking, they are called heat conductors or thermal conductors. Because next year we'll meet electrical conductors as well. And give a couple of examples. I mentioned copper rod, that's a good one. Basically all metals uh, are good, so um, steel. So to take that example a wee bit further, if you were wanting to design a frying pan, then you would make sure that the base of a frying pan is made of, say, iron or steel, so that it transfers the heat from the cooker to the food. Contrast materials which are not good at transferring heat. Are called insulators. E.g. glass is quite often used as an insulator. Uh, wood And if we return to our frying pan idea, the handle of the frying pan so it would be made of say wood or possible plastic prevents heat from transferring the cook because that would burn them. So that's what we need to know about conductors. The next learning outcome is about convection. Convection
occurs when a hot liquid or gas, which collectively are known as fluids. Right? Fluids we normally associate with liquids only, but gases are actually fluids because they can flow as well. And it occurs when a hot liquid or gas rises and cold liquid or gas falls. So in many ways this one lends itself easily to a diagram. So if I had a beaker of water and I was applying heat, so you're using a Bunsen burner at one point, then that would cause this area here to heat up, which would cause a hot liquid, right, hot water in this case. But once it reaches the top and starts to cool down, then the cool water falls. And what you get are these currents, as they're called convection currents, rising in one bit and falling in other bits. And like I say, it's true for liquids on and gases, and it's very important in our atmosphere. Um, it's, for instance, what can lead to thunderstorms, uh, when you get hot air rising and cold air falling. Now, convection, as I say, is uh, when the actual material moves, so rather than just transferring the energy from one place to another, the material moves, taking the energy with it. Just watch, you don't use the phrase heat rises, because that's not strictly true. It's hot water that rises, so you won't get the mark as you talk about heat rising. And the last section that we need to look at, it's covered by a few learning outcomes, is about radiation. And radiation occurs when hot objects of any type emit waves and these waves are called infrared and it's the main method for instance of how the heat from the, s the sun reaches us because there is no solid liquid or gas between all the way from the sun to the earth it has to travel through empty space and the only way it can do that is in the form of these infrared radiations. And that's what you feel if you go out on a nice warm sunny day. The heat that you feel just being in the sun is that infrared reaching you, infrared radiation reaching you from the sun, uh, even, even over those huge distances. Now tied in with that, most people are familiar with the idea that uh, if you want to keep cool on a hot day, you're better wearing uh, white colours. Right. Um, and that's because dull black colours are better at absorbing radiation, whereas white shiny ones tend to reflect it more. But the, the opposite is also true, that dull black objects are also better emitting radiation, which is why in hot countries uh, people can still wear dark clothing as long as you're avoiding as much direct sunlight as possible. So if you're not receiving lots of radiation from elsewhere, then you'll be emitting it. And in actual fact, you'll cool down quicker by wearing dark clothes. So dull black right, surfaces are better at emitting and absorbing radiation than white shiny surfaces. So for instance, um, foil blankets uh, are actually quite good for keeping you warm because they mean that you don't emit as much radiation. 
And then the last learning outcome just talks a wee bit about thermal images. And that would be best demonstrated in class where we actually show you thermal, thermal images. But basically thermal images measure the infrared uh, radiation. which is being emitted.